Okay, well, here's another look at sacred geometry, and we're going to make connectives with time. You're going to see those numbers that we've been talking about so many times over and over again just keep popping up. It's not like they're a fluke in any way. In fact, they're written in the stars and written in things that are as small as atoms, actually. We discussed this, but what we're looking at here is a graph that um, is on Sacred Geometry International. And Carlson here has really outdone himself on a recent video, and this is just something they had on their site for it, for I don't want to copy off their video. I felt like going through each one. And you know, I can do like I do, stopping every 10 seconds and going, oh yeah, and then talking for five minutes and then starting it again. But we're just going to go through a few points here. And one thing that I left out before when we were talking about cosmic disasters and how they had gone in a cycle of time and repeated over and over again. In fact, in the video, I made it say it over and over again a couple of times and released it. And I felt like I was beating people over the head with it for some reason and you know, uh, kind of, even though I was like, well, look at this, and here's another one, and here's another one, and here's that Toba event, and here's this, and here's that, and hey, there's that Younger Dryas event, we really need to focus on that. So it all of a sudden seemed like I was beating somebody over the head with it, probably, but <clears throat> with our current dichotomy, they had had all, all the way up until now, after science refuted the big flood and the earth was only this many years old, dinosaurs and all that stuff, right? You're with me. Once they figured that out, they weren't willing to go with it. In fact, they were like this. This was uh, some serene Eden and slowly rivers had cut way through and da-da-da and there were no big events as such. In fact, one of the big things that pointed out was whenever the Sumerian tablets got deciphered and the man figured out, oh my gosh, here it is. And then they found other tablets about the lament, lament of Inanna and everything, and it showed that it was really true. And then, of course, they tried to do a dig, and they found right at the time that was really concerned in the Noah deal that they had had a flood that had run through that was pretty devastating probably 15, 18 foot deep, but that's what it says in the Bible right before it says over the hills and blah, blah, blah. But it says that it's only a certain amount of cubits deep and so on. And that's actually kind of exactly what happened. And in the lament, it says that the temple was the only thing sticking up in these places above the water because they were such a high pyramid. People have deviated that and said, oh, the Tower of Babel was so, if they had a flood again, they would not be able to be taken away because they could be up on there. Well, it's amazing how few people you could put on top of that thing at one time, and with a big flood going around it made out of mud bricks, it's real questionable how that's going to last. But, hey, pyramids would do good, but they were smooth, and people can't get up on that. That's not what that was all about. And if we talk about the Tower of Babel and there being a flood thing, I think we start to come into question another one that came previously before that, and after they got it all together, so Younger Dryas event, and they got it all together, and they started building these towers, and other people discerned, perhaps, that that's why they had done such. And, of course, people that wrote the Bible got taken by later aspects of Sumerian-type peoples that were after Akkadian and then the Babylonian. So it had gone through quite a thing that we've discussed in other videos. <clears throat> And so really when we're talking about this that we're talking about now, this has all happened right here in the last present time till now. In fact, there's your Younger Dryas event type right there uh, showing it 12,800, 12,900 years before present, which ironically does create a flood which took a lot of earth mass away and ironically does go pretty much exactly with the dating of Atlantis and how somehow somebody had lost some big land. But let's look at a bigger picture like we're looking at here. What he's done and plotted along here, you can see that through a stretch of time, when we we're looking at this, basically from the very edge over there, we're looking at 160,000 years before present. 
and so this is 16 cubits worth of time or declamations of time here okay in that <clears throat> he wants to know that there's patterns in here and every pair there's a green dot it's a cycle of either being 6,480 years, 12,960, or 25,920. Now, if you'll remember, 25,920 is when the whole cycle of the great year goes around and comes back, and we're back at the zodiac in the same exact point. So, people that were ancient astronomers are working off of this. But 12,960 is basically half of that and half of a great year and the light side and dark side that we talk about we'll go into that again here in a second but 6480 is also just a slice of pie that's out of that that's if you will and so if we're mentally looking at this we don't have it drawn out in that circular form we'll show that in just a second and give you a different depiction of how this lays out <clears throat> but each one of these events that are here are catastrophic events that people have noted over time since we have been on the planet. The reason he picked 160,000 is it's well agreed that now there were modern people as modern as brains as big as we have today capable if at that time. Now since then we found 224,000 I think it was and then 262 and then 325,000 years over here at Jebel Arud cave recently too that is a form of a modern man that led to our current people most of which and so this is things that they all went through leading up till now. Now whenever we look at my other video, if you've seen any of them about it, it'll show you this timeline coming in and it doesn't go quite this deep, but when we're looking at the last ice age and before all the way through here, that it's real cold and it's jagging up and down like crazy and people are going through 12, 14, 18 degree floats. And right now, it pulled back up warm, and the warmest temperature we've had in the last 10,000 years was 9,000 years ago. And the warmest temperature we've had in the last 5,000 years was 4,200 years ago, or whatever it point, that little point shows up. And then we went through a recent mini ice age and came out of that, but that's when people started first studying this. So they went, wow, it's sure warming up fast, and it's during the Industrial Revolution coming out. So they were like, oh my God. And people are still trying to fearmonger this point. But we're actually at a holding trend if you look at it overall. And then, in fact, if you look at it from the longer shift of how many ice ages we've supposedly been through in the last three and the pulse of the heartbeat of that, we're really due another ice age. In fact, when I was a kid, they were talking about that and the ozone layer. It became real point and everybody freaked out and went to the right and... They had Earth Day, and then all of a sudden, they weren't talking about that anymore. <clears throat> Irregardless. Here we can see along this plotting point, the green dots there. And there are cycled points of things that happened that actually caused extinction-level events. Not of all people. So none of these are quite as big as the dinosaur one. But they come somewhat close. A few of these come very close. And if we look at how many extinction events they've had, because everybody knows about the Jurassic, the dinosaurs, but they don't know about Cambrian and all these other events that had happened before, and even recently, and where they don't think about it. When they talk about such, they're like, oh, coming out of the last ice age, we lost to some, and supposedly we got all strong and killed them all off. And it's like, that isn't at all how that happened. And in fact, the event that took us out of it seems to have caused that, and we almost lost everybody again. In fact, each one of these events, anybody involved with any of these events, and actually saw it happen, didn't have any ancestry, pretty much. 
they had to have been very much in the distance, but it brought about mythologies that we talk about still to this day. And so then again, we have that thing where myth has some truth in it. I'm going to reveal a few things also here in a minute that, uh, well, I started out to do that, and then I wanted to see if I could connect this, and then somehow I got connected onto it again with the destruction events, you know, and, well, they talk about Bible, you know, and the big flood and then Armageddon. Well, we're looking at some of these events that went through that had some things like that, but really those events were from mythologies that we created right up in here, and then one was about one that happened before here because this was the second event that made everything go poo that they even tell you in the Bible. It's not supposed to happen again. <clears throat> well, it did. Abraham and bingo and all these things. But if you'll look, some of these numbers here just seem real catchy and they go along with these same numbers. There's that, well, 25, 9, 20. Well, here's a calibrated 26. Yeah, 52, 72, which is conspicuous in one of our numbers. It's the little bitty section of the great year that comes off as one degree worth of time during 72 years and then we have another connective where the lifetime expectancy of a normal human can be viewed as one small slice of a greater year numbers around 108 or 104 but i think it has a gradient on it of a few thousand years and then 144,000 we also have there big old finger at that time <laughs> closer to the camera so <clears throat> it's another one that's conspicuous and we're going to make a mention of it because he has a slide of it which I did a different video on once but we'll look into it again and talk about it is this event that's right here and at 4320 a Burkle a crater event and this might have been part of Noah's flood and the understanding of that but that would have coughed across India and it caused a big problem there and even Australia and they've correlated it now we've also found it just before that on this dot here how there's a new crater found that's apparently dating to about this exact same time that all this was supposed to have happened and a comet fragmented and did all these things and caused a great flooding and we can see that spike whenever we look at it. Well, let's look at this on a different scale. If we were to take something like the Zodiac and then plot these same dots. Now I have to mention, there are really three or four or I think five other events that are meh. They fit up under there. It's not just some tsunami or this, that, and the other. These are huge events that make really anything that we talk about now and oh my god is really uh, nothing. In fact, it would be the thing for thousands of years that people would talk about if they ever had a flood, they'd be like, well, remember da-da-da. Or yet they would write mythologies about it so it would be kept. Even in children's stories, so it could be kept in any way, shape, or form from that point because you never know. <clears throat> well, they started to figure out a rhythm here to this. So let's look at this rhythm that we're talking about. When we see this, <coughs> pardon me, we can tell one thing. Let me start out by beginning to uh, say that we are right here, and this is the dawning of the age of Aquarius, right, right on this decimation, right? And so if you go back from that, we're going through Aries, or Pisces, and Aries, and Taurus, around the little pies. That pie right here is 6480, 6480, and here we have that cross and the circle around it that you always saw on these holy people back in the day that had on the top of it. And it's so, it's the Christ of, cross of Christ, and this, and that, no, it's, it, it goes back to a whole lot more things that connect to it. Sure, we'll just add that into it, but it's not like it was built on it in any way, shape, or form, but the other way around. 
But if we look, here's all those events that have been put and plotted upon that graph. In fact, if we look, here's the Younger Dryas event on the other side of it over here. In fact, it looks like on the propeller of the Great Wheel as it goes around, big things keep happening about there. Don't they? In fact, they're calibrated. There's very little wiggle to that line. And if we went down and looked at the bottom of it here, there are almost as many events. Now what we're looking at here is spinning in time from the inside to the outside, basically. So as you get more and more outside rings, you're going through later and later times, or farther and farther back in time. Just like if you spin around this way, we're going back in time. And if we said it was one year, but yeah, it, it, after 72 of those, the whole thing's pivoting back just a hair, and it goes one decan, as they refer to it. And that is a decade, or a portion of the greater year. But we're lacking a couple here, and it looks like it's, oh man, it looks like it's our turn. Although there are a couple of vents that show up on either of the side propellers. Always they seem to be coming into the event, and we are at the dawning of the age of Aquarius. And here's another connection, and it's like, wow, hmm. Maybe we ought to pay extra special attention, because... We could be screwed out of this and have to come up with this in a whole different way 10,000 years from now and then try to get somewhere real fast and people would sit around with their thumb up their ass and not do anything to save us all and here we go again. But that's just me picking at the fact that we are not spacemen just yet for we easily could have a lot more going on and not relying on a guy that builds cars and stuff who had a whim and Virgin International and people like that to take us to the next level whenever we should have been doing that in the 70s. Oh yeah, it would be well perfected by now if they ever got it going. And oh, we've got better technology now so it's easier. I can't tell and also it would have been possible but easier and easier and easier and more possible and ah, uh, and we'd already be much farther. Does anybody remember whenever they said by 1995 we'd have people going to Mars? Then it was 2005 and 2010 or whatever and then 2015 and by 2022 we're gonna have yeah so here's this cross and so we find Astro Theology hooked up again with these events and so you know you talk about comets and how they were omens and all those things that go along with that but in this sacred geometry look at type things there's a lot of ways when looking around at the earth or looking at something notice that this is very sun centered already at this point when it was declamated by the way So when we talked about Burkle Crater here that might have something to do with the events that made all the snows melt in the mountains above what is the Tigris and Euphrates and caused the super flood here that they blamed on God and the Bible and so on. We're looking at it from a viewpoint that's described in the Sumerian tablets as whenever they watched it happen, but they would have not been focused on this point. But there's Burkle Crater and... In fact, there's Coffin Bay, Australia, straight across here. And so this over 400 foot tall wave hitting the shore at this point here when this happened would have run aground all the way across here. In fact, if you can tell, you can see that rippling like on a beach shore. The only problem is, is these ripples that are over here are some 60, 80 foot tall, I think. And they've got pictures of these other ones that are like over 100 foot tall. And so whenever we saw those ones in America, and that great flood, and da-da-da, and people have gone, oh yeah, there's been a hell of a flood come through here, and where it caused those ripples, 
here we have things that are in a magnitude over and above that but you can imagine if somebody took a giant cup of water somehow or a big paddle in the water and go whoosh over the you know west to east right there and pushed it on and it covered that whole land and then drained back off of it so it went around here causing the ripples and then drained back off of it yeah, they've got they've got this figured out pretty much now and it happened so you know they they had that in Madagascar here and they have this thing called the Fanambosi chevrons and uh, 672 foot high in fact what is this inset picture I think it says something one New York Plaza yeah, and how, how tall those buildings are. And you can tell that, oh, it's uh, you know, about as tall as the tallest buildings that are in one New York plaza from sea level, from the ground, to where they cut through and left this up here. And so it's not something that's dinky in any way. Yeah, it screwed over a large portion of South Africa also and washed across a portion of it up here everywhere that radiated wave went out quite quite some amount right wasn't a wasn't a small event but it's not really listed on here except for the fact that well here's another one even closer to us that might be something that even led to something in a Noah's flood and it really wasn't that People all died. Well, no, people, a lot of people died during that time, and a lot of things happened during that time, but it wasn't an extinction event that we can notice, and all the animals gone from a certain point, and all of that. But yet, drastic changes happened after this, and hey, nothing that we've talked about has to do with cow farts yet. We were at a warmer temperature, and all of those things. So keep that in mind whenever people try to sell you things like this want to sell you bullshit so when we're looking at this has anybody ever watched you know you've seen where I have the space shuttle going around the earth and all those things going on right you ever wonder why whenever they show it they show this oscillation where it's going up and down whenever it's coming around up and down it's a little different next time it comes around up and down that's why they had to have the satellites in all these certain areas because it goes around but when they're going around the earth, how the hell, if they're going to zoom, how are they going, whoa, 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 well, they're not. The earth is kind of doing that, and it's wobble as it goes around. In fact, that's a sine wave pattern where it has that, that it goes over. And that's the pivot of the sky and the differential. You know, we know how many degrees, it's 23 degrees, summer and then winter, and you have that pivot that goes on. Well, just like that great year we were looking at has the symbology of a single year, we also have where one pivot up of our pivot during a year, not a day, equates to that long point or the top of a wave at June 21st, right? And then it hits the bottom of the wave at December 21st. And by that kick that's going on, that's summer and winter. And each degree that it's making this flip that it goes on, even though to our appearance, the sun is following one degree per day down to its lowest point at December 21st, sits for three days, and then rises again to save all mankind. And I've talked about this in a lot of the Christmas videos. 30 days is equal to 30 degrees worth of sun movement across in this concept in arcs of its pivot if you were to pie chart the up and pie chart the down and it has a center of which as it keeps going there's a hair step that's off of it and we note notice this as being well it's like leap year and you wonder why they call it leap year well in dances especially like the waltz it's one two three and one two three and one two three and if you ever dance with a lady close where you're doing these type of dances that were all based on sacred geometry and the music that's behind it which i've shown you is all based on it they're pivoting round and around while everybody's going around a room and it's kind of wow 
what the hell yeah and that little step back and they're recreating these seasonal things that goes on and boys meeting girls and putting the yin and yang together makes the world go round yeah so some of those dances and everything and some of those sacred well not sacred some of those well-known uh ancient uh beethoven bach and all those things are actually all based on different types of scales which i've explained to you are named after phrygia and dorian and all these people that were ancient anatolian all these people that helped herald everything that went on and the variations on a theme of the caucasians that did this thought about naming this navigation on a maritime sea in the heavens because when you look at it when we talk about things like this we always find ourselves using maritime connections and words as such in fact mary well like in the bible but also that's maritime and what is that well that has to do with the ocean and there's a cosmic sea and they're all using different declamations and so on and even if you go into space you're having to pinpoint and do things and angles and work off of stuff and of course we're no longer working off gravity in a flat point we're standing on an around object in a lot of ways it becomes a little easier but so we've talked about archaeoastronomy astro theology well let's let's go with it again here somewhat there's flood myths all around the earth there and here's some people that were geniuses that most people thought were stupid whenever they started saying a lot of their things but When you talk about archaeoastronomy and hooked up to the Bible and even our common times, uh, maybe in some of my videos it seems like we've lost some of this and we have somewhat, but then again, this was only kept by certain people and most of which you had to be the in crowd or you didn't have any chance of knowing it in the first place and you had to be in long term and successful and all the things that worked along with it to get to the point of even learning some of the more intrinsic things that are in here, but Let's go with another one. Here's, a, here's one of those golden little puzzle pieces that sticks this whole thing with that whole thing together. In fact, it makes that connect too because all those knobs work. When we talk about things like uh, the Bible, we have patriarchy. And we've talked about that before and how pater means father. So when we talk about patriarchy, we're actually talking about father arc or an arch. When we talk about maritime situations, there are arc seconds. People are familiar with the term archbishop, right? Well, funny how that works with it, too. I'll be there in a second. A decan, as we had talked about, is a 72-year or one degree of the great year. It's kind of a decade working situation, right? People wonder where the name Deacon comes from. But D-E-C-A-N can be pronounced Deacon, even though we have it spelled D-E-A. It's its root. Let's go again with something that's more maritime, but hooking up with astrotheology and everything when we talk about a cardinal. Well, Cardinal's red, and yeah, well, red symbology goes with all of us for the Caucasian people for we put together all this stuff and the woo-woo that goes along with it. All the way back from cave writings from red ochre, we talked about that in symbology, but the Cardinal bird is red. This is true. In fact, he was named for that, not the other way around, people. For a Cardinal is the compass points. Yeah, and when I was in Boy Scouts, you learn about, well, there's north and there's east and then there's northeast. But there's also east-northeast on this side and then north-northeast on that side. So you can get a more correct bearing. In fact, it breaks into 360 around this whole thing. <clears throat> and that cross works with these cardinal points. 
We talked about cardinal points and how they hook up with the man, the bull, the eagle, and the lion. This basically is the Lama Zoo of the Sumerians. This is the cherubim that they talked about guarding things. This is the Ezekiel's wheel for that symbology over and over again. And if you don't know, you're like, what? Oh, maybe it's a UFO. And Bishop is one third of a giant or a great year's quarter on that slice of pie that we just talked about. It's like chinka slice of pie. Yeah, they wear that funny hat. That funny hat is very reminiscent of the Wayback Machine in Dagon and the Sumerians and that fish-looking hat. In fact, you'll see the Pope wearing it. He even has a little Jewish star on his side of his eye. One Jewish star, aha, and it's where the eye would be. The description was it looked like a fish. Yeah, well, that does. The other description said it had scales. Yeah, like scale armor and stuff. Meeting of people that didn't have anything like that. It was almost like magic. We've talked about that. You know, a pastor, he really tries to relate you to the past ages. Ha, huh? pastor, ha. Huh? Secretly, though, apparently. Here, let's go with another one. How about, you know about monastery. Monasteries are, well, monastery means one star. One star. That's the sun. You see, because the other planets that we have worshipped and put all on the gods has now turned into angels and so on. And because they are living off, or their glow is from, that one great star and so they're not quite exactly right whenever they say the Sumerians said that the stars in our sky are like our own sun but as a torch far far in the distance yeah they make a, an idea like that but then the planets aren't on fire like that and everything and then we really are going around the sun and it's the thing that made it all happen in the first place and so, again, the others aren't stars necessarily, although planets means wandering star, doesn't it? Aha! So a monastery is dedicated back towards sun worship. And the one star, monastery, mono is the one. And aster is a star. So now we worship all as one and not as 12 design aspects with Mother Nature or other aspects that we had before. I mean, the, the Pope is like a papa or a father or grandfather, if you will. Clerics. You know that name, it's hooked up with the clerics, but it's usually somebody that's like a monk. In fact, monasteries are full of monks that are studying this type of stuff, not necessarily, you know, you, you get to monks, you start thinking about Shaolin priests and all kinds of people that are doing weird things. But clerics, well, clerical work is people that tabulate or they, a timekeeper or scribes back in the ancient days. Some of them was able to put things down on the paper and tabulate things. and well, That's a cleric. In the church you hear of Monsignor. Well, that's mono. That's one head man. Padre, father. He's the old man or elder. All right? The waxing and waning of the moons and planets. In retrograde, where it goes back and forth in different year cycles. The car, like vicarious, which you hear about a vicar. It's cognate to English vice or viceroy. Roy being hooked up to kings. El Roy, the great king. Light, day, or dios, by daylight. Like Shrek, you know, and by daylight one way by day and another by night the way that she keeps flopping back and forth 
timekeeping, small and large, and great amount of time. You can't see this by day, only when in the shadow, and in the shadow realm. What are you talking about? Well, you don't see any of the stars during the day. Some of this is just so simplistic. It goes over people looking for farther amounts, and then when you think that way, you're like, oh, and then they have some deep esoteric thing, and you're like, well, what, you know, and it flops back and forth. So you, that's why they can give you layers at a time, kind of like I've done to you here for a while. Because like I said, I can't reveal to you all at once, and if I did, you wouldn't believe it, because it seems like I'm putting too many things together, and the esoteric knowledge is that all hook up together. But if you reveal it in pieces to somebody and then let them gestate it on a little while, which is usually a period of time a lot longer than we do, and they're to study in its facts, some of this becomes evident to them. And then like Grasshopper, he suddenly finds the truth and he starts saying something that you weren't supposed to teach him yet, and then he snatched the pebble from your hand. The Bible clearly says God is light. You have holy, which hooks up with halo, which hooks up with light. The sun, holistic, natural. Saul, it's cleansing. Pine Saul, soul. A cross came from a double axe or a lavender style, where we talk about it looking exactly like and mimicking in the ancient of times and why war axes were built the way that they were. And you see it symbology all over the place and it just whoosh, unless you know. Labris, laboratory. Now we're into alchemy, aren't we? Man, you can go off in the left field and talk about all the things, the crossing of lines and that labris build and the way that it cuts across ching 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 you know it's, you think of things but something comes to mind the union jack well jack has to do with jacob the uniting of the 12 tribes and the way it's hooked up there and the zodiac as seen in the levite breastplate yeah which you use birthstones and we still use that birthstone things today i don't know where you are in the world but it's common thing or it used to be in the south at least in america to get a ring for your mother and she would get different birthstones for the months of her kids and it's really so she wouldn't forget you know and, and drop the ball thing but as if a mom could ever forget it's ever in for remembrance even flags are built on a sacred ratio what we're looking at when we see Union Jacks and things are crosses. Yeah, it's evident in the Confederate flag too, but hold on, that shape's there in, in Denmark too. So it's, you know, calm down. Flag is a sacred ratio though, we talked about, where the certain size by a certain side. Even something like St. Peter's monolith marks this. It's a actual sundial that's hooking up with this great spoke of time at the Vatican, and it looks extremely like what we were just looking at earlier. <clears throat> and temple. Even though I've talked about how Tempel was the fact that they used to make temporary tents for the god El, which is what is built into the Bible El, and all of its connections, um, words have other esoteric meanings. Temporal means mind and time. And in D&D, &D, it's with specials, and they tell you what's temporal. It's mind magic. It does this, da, 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 da. It's the same root. Also, temper, though, is, which has to do with heat. You're getting mad or anger. And then again, temporary, as a tent, as apparently all of all time, if we keep forgetting things like this. Hopefully you've read this while I'm talking, but ancient knowledge will again bound and overflow as water upon the earth. The remains of this knowledge are everywhere about us, and everyday use and perfect its revival point to a restoration of the period prior to the confusion of the lip. What? That's a source of measure. It was a prophecy, but the confusion of lip was the confusion of tongues when people didn't have anything. And I've talked about how they've realized a long time ago everybody 
from Sanskrit to Irish and all in between except for some of the lower and southwestern dialects which end up being used to call Hamitic and so on. They're all still Caucasian languages but variations on a theme. All have a derivative that goes back to Aryan languages but if you want to talk about a language that everybody could have understood even if you were duh and you would use such language to build an incredible thing like a Tower of Babel it would be sacred geometry and numbers because three is three and I don't care where the hell you are and if you can understand complex math which can be quite difficult for some people who've never experienced anything like such <clears throat> but it's built into your Bible there's a hundred and forty four thousand that'll be saved in revelations what does that got to do with that's this, this whole thing connected up with and while there are ancient sayings that well whenever the Romans were knew that they were gonna get them back for attacking them out of nowhere yeah you know, the Jewish revolt or whatever they had in 1966 that happened in the six months of the six years so oh, whoopsie that they pulled out about well well you know that's just a giant number uh, we pulled out about a Google of people. 12 times 12 is 144. Why do things keep having this numbers of 12 and 6 and 360 on them? And in fact, you can look at our clock and as it spins around in 360, that's 12 hours and 12 night and this, that, and the other. Da, da, da. The Sumerians had this all figured out. That's why we still use it today. And so when people say, yeah, they, they figured out uh, uh, some agriculture and farming huh and 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 writing down things in clay tablets and it's like dude no they knew sacred geometry they knew advanced calculus they knew all kinds of things in fact the more you get into it the more you realize wow how do we lose all of this and then all of a sudden supposedly plato comes up with this stuff and da 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 and he figured out about the the circumference of the earth no the great pyramid which predates that by quite a bit is based on the size of the earth and the freaky thing is the difference between height and width of it i.e. how tall it is and how wide it is is the difference that the earth is the exact same amount Randall goes into it on his latest video too or I think it's two videos back now so look up a sacred geometry channel Randall Carlson boom it'll show up on there and he has a guy that's uh, making all kinds of graphics and drawing real quick you know the speed drawing been sped up. It's real good. Shows you how the Sumerians used to have this belief that the Earth used to spend 360 years, but after a great catastrophe somehow that happened, that it slowed it down and it gave us that five extra days. That they were kind of unlucky and they tried to put them in between lucky days so it wasn't so bad and everybody knew it was going to happen and they geared up for it and then everybody. <gasps> Yeah, and they had all these rituals that went along with it and everything. Yeah, and it's uh, so he tells you, <clears throat> in his words, these geometric relationships are fundamental to basically the structure of our own consciousness. This is not something that we invented, but it is something that we discovered. I want to stop right there. This is not something we made up. It's just portions that we found off of it. And if you call this one, then you do this. Well, it's, let's call the little bit one. And how many of them are there in this thing? There, there's exactly three. There's exactly 1.618. How does that work out? There's one of this. There's that. Oh, wait. That's just like the pine cone. That's just like the seashell. That's just like the, oh, my gosh. My arm is that difference between my wrist. The thing on my fingers works out to that same diff. My body works out to that same differential. The size of me versus this works out to that same differential. My pace works out to that same differential. In fact, the pace times a thousand, which is where we get the word mil from Latin, makes a mile. Mil, mile. That's where a mile comes from. A normal man's pace is about 5.28 feet. And a big man like Randall 
would probably be a little bit more than that. And if we were to take about, oh, 60 people here and take the tallest one and the little short guy out of the situation and then have them all guess what to do it, it would really be close to right about here. And even with mathematics, you could figure it out, and that's how you get 5.28. It's been around forever. In fact, Stonehenge is based around it. The circumference of Stonehenge is 1 50th of a mile exactly. Yeah, it's back in a language back in time that everybody had when it all hooked up. In fact, the differences that we have in the cubit seem to be the differences in our declamation around the surface of the earth. I.e., you know that the, the way that the web looks around the earth of longitude and latitude and how that gets a little smaller as it goes up higher, a little small percentages, and when they have a temple up here, it's got this kind of thing going on versus this versus that. And what's that got to do with it? Uh, everything. Some great cathedrals are built on this same thing, same concept. And you wonder why it took these guys that are great artisans, sometimes generations, to finish off one of these things, but it was all made to do just right. But one thing's for certain, they may not have exactly known all of that in a bag of chips, but somebody sure as hell did that was hooked up with it the entire time, and the one that set it up right as it sets in its size and its declamation. But this is something we discovered. It's magic. It was God's fingerprint. It still is. It works with light. Waves of light. Frequency as opposed to light. As opposed to sound. As opposed to everything and the harmony of multiple frequencies going on at one time. It's all written into it. It's a freak out thing. I told you, it just made me freak out when I started figuring it out and then it fell together and I just overwhelmingly am like, wow. And then I found out it got deeper and deeper and more and more. Oh my gosh. It's incredible. It's intrinsic within the fabric of nature itself and the proportions that we find that govern nature are also the proportions that govern our own consciousness. And so, in effect, what Plato understood and what everybody, I think, understood about it is that studied sacred geometry was that, in fact, it was in a way of developing your conscience as well. Going through these knowledge points helps ascend you in a way of understanding. And then, well, let's put it this way. Without this, you dwell in darkness almost if you know about these type of things versus someone who doesn't. They are unaware of all these things. And whenever you start talking about deep things, they don't know what the hell you're talking about because they're even unaware of this. So we talked about 108 here and how that hooks up with the moon. I recently did one about werewolves and why 108 and why it works with the moon. And 108 is the atomic weight of silver and oh my gosh, how it all works together. AG and its name and where its derivative come from, the whole nine yards. The light of a full moon. Well, 108 times 2160. So those are both moon numbers equals 23,280 miles if we'll go off that and we talked about mile where we get that from but ironically and no it's not ironically it comes out to being oh, exactly how far the moon is away what the hell okay if that just you'd be like uh, okay we'll use the same formula correlation and things and the numbers that we've been using till now and let's go with okay the sun since it's all based around that if they had it all figured out and it all worked out just right it'd have to be that too well let's look, go with that circumference of the moon we uh, sun we talked about 864,000 times that moon concept which it eclipses oh then yeah well, 108 is 93,312,000 miles. That's, hmm, that's right at where we exactly think. 
It's distances away from it. That's one astronomical unit. So 108 solar diameters is equal to one astronomical unit. And 108 lunar diameters is the average distance of the moon itself too. So there's another connection. It just keeps getting deeper and deeper. Earth's orbital velocity is 66,615 miles an hour with an accuracy of 99.9%. .9%. So there's that 666 again. Moon's diameter is 2160, uh, 2,160 miles or 6.66 with an accuracy of 99.9 .9 miles. The sun's sacred geometry hurts up to 666 and the squaring of the circle which shows you in the diagram of above, hooks up to degrees of 666. Earth's actual tilt is a complementary angle of 66.6, .6, or well, it's 22.3, but it wobbles back and forth relative to the POE. Carbon molecules contain six protons, six electrons, six neutrons. What's that got to do with thing? Carbon, oh, our carbon footprint. Oh, you're, you've got a carbon footprint. You're made out of it. Yeah, we're carbon creatures. So it's kind of odd, too, that they freak out about it, but you want to keep it within measure. But, oh my gosh, they're freaking out. So here we can see a hex hooked up around, but if you can see it, there's also the way that you make a hex into a cubed square that's around this circle. And we have the degrees of 66.6. .6. The distance from the sun and the moon and at its winter solstice, with it going at two thousand one hundred and sixty miles or in, in its circumference right and it puts it right here that's the declamation of where it is from us from the Sun too even though this is drawn in an aspect much smaller this is an esoteric look at the way that it unfolds inside of itself this is the way they understood it a long time ago. This was used in all kinds of little magical rituals and all kinds of things. 